Hey, what's going on guys? Dan Rice, FHCoutdoors.com. Today's video, it's all about getting ready for fall. I love changing the oil and the motor. I love kind of just cleaning the boat up, making sure you got some good wax on there. Uh, but another pet peeve of mine, especially if you wash your boat at a car wash with, with pressured water, PSI behind it, these side bunks, the marine carpet is not designed to take PSI straight on like an impact. Um, you know, of course, I wash my boat every time I take it out. I wipe it down, I wash it, I clean it. Um, you know, that's even more important as you head into the fall and into the winter because the de-icer, the salt on the roads, all that kind of stuff, man, it wreaks havoc on trailers. But the bunks underneath the boat are fine. The carpet's in still pretty good shape. These side bunks are what they call the fender bunks that help actually align the boat as you come in on the trailer. The carpet has basically been destroyed, and that's simply because as I wash down the side of the boat, let's say with a sprayer at the car wash, uh, that makes contact with the, con with the carpet and it just disintegrates it. It's not designed to take pressured water. Um, you know, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to remove these side pieces with the boat still on. We're gonna take the wheels off. We have both axles jacked up and just a few simple tools will, will actually allow you to get to this, replace the carpet, reinstall it, and we have no downtime whatsoever. It takes about an hour on each side, and that's what we're gonna do today. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things you're gonna need. All right, so there's just a few simple tools you guys are gonna need. Now you may be wondering, how in the heck are you gonna get in between the side of the boat and the fender, right? Well, you can't just get a normal screwdriver in there, but what you can get at a hardware store is called an offset screwdriver. This will allow me to get behind the fender have leverage and hold the screw that's going through the carpet side, which will allow me to obviously take off the wheels, get to the bolts that I see. There's seven on them on, on each side. That way I can get to the nut to loosen it. And so without taking the boat off the trailer, this one little tool called an offset screwdriver will allow you to do the job at home, whether it's in your garage or in the driveway and just a couple hours of your time. Um, now there's seven different bolts. The, uh, the one on this, uh, Skeeter, the, the nuts that's holding on the machine screws are 3 8 okay? You, obviously, yours may be different. Um, there were a couple of different times that the bolts were so rusted that I really had to just, you know, pretty much take a hammer to them and knock them off, or you can always cut them off uh, if you have um, any, any sort of cutting tool that, that you use for other projects. I do recommend that if you jack up your axles like I have, make sure you have the other side of the boat chalked so that the boat does not roll. You could also put a piece of wood or something in front of the tongue jack just to make sure, but this guy ain't going nowhere with the other side of it chalked. Do this other guy, and then I'll get in here and show you guys what these look like. And essentially these are just brackets here that hold the bottom of this piece of plastic. On your boat it may be wood and you may actually want to replace that wood if you're doing this job. Uh, I think most of the newer boats come with this plastic and it's wrapped in the carpet. But as you work your way down you have seven total. So what I'm going to do, start here on this one. Put your finger in the carpet, you can feel it. and turn it until you are in there, like swimwear. Go ahead and push the screw out. And just like this, here is the machine screw. Here's the nut, and now we got six more to go. All right, so now that we have all the screws out, all you have to do is push this in to get them off the, the brackets underneath, and you might have to wiggle it out just a little bit. But it will come right out. And 
Voila. Pretty nasty. It's, uh, it's obviously dirty. It, it's starting to come apart. And what we're going to do now is um, this is stapled to this piece of plastic. And we're going to take a flathead screwdriver, go through, put it through the staple, pull up on the handle. And it's going to pop all of them out. We'll be able to take the carpet off. Some of them will be a little bit hard to get out, but really, as long as you just apply pressure and pry up, you can have most of the staples out. You are going to have to go back and pull them out with like a pair of pliers because some of them will be actually sticking up and you got to be careful because you can easily cut yourself on these things. Um, but just slowly work your way around. Just make sure you're the goal right now is to just get the carpet off. They certainly contain a lot of dirt. All right, guys. So the next step here is uh, working your way around. If you're like me and reusing this piece uh, to pull out the staples, a lot of them are going to be stuck in there. And like I said, they can certainly uh, they can stab you pretty good. So just be careful. And all right, guys. So the next step, man, it's getting ready to lay the carpet on this and staple the bad boy up. Um, I went to BassBoatSeats.com, which is where I got this carpet. I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever. Um, I simply went online and, and did a quick Google search and it came right up and I looked at the reviews. I'm always looking at reviews. Um, and so people loved them. They said it was fast shipping and no doubt it was very, very fast shipping. It was free. And I think I spent like $35 on this carpet and, and how you do it is you measure how much you need. Okay, so one bunk is about, oh, I'd say five feet long. So I have two bunks, that's going to be 10 feet. I got a couple extra feet. So let's just say I got 12 feet worth of carpet. The other thing you need to know is how wide this is because you also need to order a certain width of carpet. This is about six or seven inches wide. So I ordered the 12 inch wide carpet. You're going to have enough to wrap around the edges and staple it and, and pretty much be done. So if you're like me and you want to do this about as cheap and as fast as possible, uh, there were a couple pneumatic staplers at Home Depot that I researched. There was an Arrow and there was another another brand. I looked at the reviews and a lot of people said that this one doesn't jam as often. So this is the one I went with. They're both similar in price, different brand, whatever. Um, the biggest difference here is that you, know, you want to make sure that you use stainless steel staples. I'm using a genuine T50 staple. It's a half inch staple and it's stainless steel. Don't buy steel. Don't go to the store and get your regular staples because they're going to rust. You don't want to do that. You want to use stainless steel, everything where possible. Okay. And so, like I said, the pneumatic staple gun that hooks up to the compressor, 35 bucks, a what a thousand pack of stainless steel staples. That was like maybe five or six bucks. And you're pretty much out the door for 40, $45 plus the carpet, another 40 bucks. Let's just call it a hundred bucks in a couple hours of your time. And that's all it takes because other people, other shops, they're going to charge you at least a few hundred bucks. You know, first and foremost, get this centered on here the best you can. Just make sure that you have enough to wrap over each side. Okay, that's fine. And then, of course, if you're bad at wrapping Christmas presents, you may have an issue with this par particular part of the process. But I'm going to make it really, really easy for you guys, okay? So you're going to come around here and we're going to trim this corner off just like this. You know, just, just leave a few inches out here. You don't got to get too crazy. Um, the great thing is, is we have a few extra feet of carpet. So if we mess it up, we can just scoot it down. So let's just kind of keep around here. It really helps if you have a brand new blade. I'm just following the shape of the board. Okay. So the next step here is what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this corner and you're going to want to bring it straight in. Okay. Now what that's going to do, it's going to allow us to fold this over right here. As you can see, I nicked my finger with that blade already. What that's going to allow us to do is bring it in this corner. It's going to allow us to bring the bottom up. And then this is where we're going to make our first staple. Okay, so that's going to hold it. Now the next step is we're going to be folding this down. And essentially what's going to happen is you want this to just look nice and clean. 
So just make a nice little fold here, bring it down, I'm bleeding all over the place. Pull it nice and tight, just like that. Hold it with your finger and do another staple. Okay, so now that corner is done. It's going to look really nice because I can already tell that it's, it's just nice and tight. And you're just going to work your way around the board making sure that you don't have any excess along the edge. It's okay if you bunch it up on this side because you're not ever going to see that anyway. All right, guys, as you can see, just finished up the staple job. Really nice and tight. That's the goal of this whole deal. Really nice and clean. Brand new carpet. The next step is going to be installing the stainless steel machine screws. It's got a Phillips head and the stainless steel nylock nuts so that none of this rust and this stuff will last for years and years and years. Awesome. So the last and final step is getting the bunk back in place and then securing it back down with the seven stainless steel bolts that you've purchased. Uh, these are number eight stainless steel machine screws. All right, I think 24 threads is what they are. It's one and an eighth inch long. You can obviously go a little longer. You can almost go a little bit shorter as well. I have plenty of bolt coming out the other side. The biggest piece is since we can't use washers on the inside because it's a curved corner, you can't stick a flat washer up against, against the curved corner, is making sure that you're using stainless steel nylock nuts. So these have a nylon insert in them, and that's going to make sure that they don't back out over time, okay? So there's seven on each side, pretty much an hour total on each side, and you are done. Completely brand new carpet, new bunks if you went that route, and it's a really, really simple job. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Like I said, it's pretty simple. You can do this in your garage like I just showed you. Um, some of the pneumatic tools and the compressor and things make this job go faster, but those are not necessary. At the very least, go get yourself an electric stapler and you too with this brand new carpet. You can save a ton of money and it feels really good that you just did this yourself and uh, you didn't have to take it anywhere. Um, I will have some links down below. I'm not affiliated with anything that I'm posting down below uh, because I have no affiliation with any sort of... Uh, tool company or, or even Amazon or anything like that. So, you know, feel free to click around and, you know, if these work for you, great. If not, find something else compatible online from a place you choose. Uh, but follow the process and you too will have brand new bunks on your boat. And uh, really, really looking forward to some fall fishing, man. Thanks, guys.